for various uh, uh, records for various uh, uh, for various observation but we will be taking for a particular company or for a particular value across time so when i have uh, the data something like this let's say in this spreadsheet i have the data right uh, from january 2010 on a monthly basis what has been the stock index sensex value so this kind of a data where the 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 time is a critical factor across various points in time i have collected the values of one particular variable that kind of a data is what i call as a time series data and when it comes to the time series data our intention is to primarily first understand is there any kind of trend trend is an aspect talking about moving with time is there any kind of uh, values increasing with time or falling with time so that is one aspect and then we may also have to look at is there any kind of seasonality that is present in the data so we'll first start off with how do i look at uh, the time and the presence of time in the data uh, sorry trend and the present of trend in the data for that we have two major aspects to look at one we look at a linear trend and the other one we look at as a log linear trend any of these kind of trends present in the data is what uh, we would be taking out for so when i am talking about a simple linear trend kind of a model the simple way to work out a linear trend model is so you have the values across time and you take time as one more variable and when you are taking the time as a variable right from the first period you start off saying 1 2 3 4 so on so this is a time variable which we have now we can do the regression taking this as the independent variable and our actual variable as a dependent variable and based on this create a regression equation and uh, that is what is the first thing that will typically uh, check out for the presence of trend in the uh, or for the presence of linear trend in the variable okay so let if i try to execute this as a simple regression wherein i am more interested in i'll remove these uh, variables i am more interested in taking the sensex as the y axis the input y range i take uh, the dependent uh, variable which is uh, let's say the sensex and i will take the time as the independent axis that is what is the first aspect of a linear trend kind of a model all right so when i say okay to this linear trend model okay let's see here what is happening the r squared is 0.22 and the intercept is 17225 255 and uh, the time is 46 so probably i could have written this equation as yt or sensex at point t sensex at point t is 17255 i am rounding it off plus 46.61 times the time this is the equation and of course uh, the mechanism is as simple as your simple linear regression and uh, the mechanism that has been used to derive this uh, a and b just like your simple linear regression a plus bx kind of thing 
the only thing is instead of x which is the dependent variable we take time in the form of 1 2 3 4 and instead of a a is the intercept itself and this mechanism just to reiterate this is an ols mechanism ordinary least squares method of doing the regression right uh, the a and b are typically derived from the perspective of making sure that the error is minimized y y y y i equal to a plus b x i plus uh, epsilon and that intention of finding out a and b is based on minimizing the square of the error so based on this we got this kind of an equation and the betterment of this uh, equation is it a really good equation or not is are these coefficients statistically significant or not we can check out from the p values the p value is less than 5 percent very much less than 5 percent for the time so and at the same time overall model also the p value is less than 0.05 so we cannot reject the null hypothesis sorry we have to reject the null hypothesis and say that time is an important uh, factor in the determination of uh, the sensex for the next period and uh, the model is overall a fit, fit kind of a model itself but when you look at r squared the value is not that high so it is uh, probably the influence is much weaker compared to uh, uh, compared to what it should have been probably if I can get a better model it would be more and more preferable but it is not something that can be ignored also because we are seeing that time is a decent uh, factor time is uh, a significant statistically significant uh, variable in the determination of the value of the sensex so if at all I want to predict what would be the sensex for the next period i can typically uh, substitute 50 now right now it is 49 so for the next period if i want to predict in the same thing probably in uh, for the time take it as 50 and you say that the next period prediction based on this model should be intercept plus the coefficient of time multiplied by the time value which is 19,586 is the value that it predicts and at the same time you can build a 95% interval around it but some small observation the standard error seems to be very very high so the standard error of the forecast also will come out much much higher which will result in a very weird output for us but just to start with this is one way we look at this is one way which we can uh, look at for evaluating a time series model i would first check out if there is any kind of a trend that is present in the model the other way the same thing could have been accomplished is just simply plot a line chart for this just simply take a line chart right uh, probably a line chart for this uh, data this is your line chart and if possible you attach a trend line to it this is the typical uh, trend line and what we are seeing here is there are so many points which are much above the trend again coming down again going up that is the kind of a pattern that is being observed so we have to really uh, evaluate is there any better model rather than the existing uh, linear trend kind of a model itself which is explaining or which is uh, helpful in predicting the price for the next period predicting the sensex value for the next period the next item that we can think of looking at in any time series analysis is okay if the linear is not that great why can't i look at a log linear kind of a model that's the second thing i would like to look at right the log linear model so in a typical uh, linear model we were thinking of the expression as yt is equal to a plus 
B into T. This is what was our and plus some error. This is what was our linear trend model. When I say a log linear trend model, it comes out as Y T is equal to E power A plus B T. This is what we call as a log linear trend model. So applying the logarithms on both sides, we take logarithm of Y T is equal to A plus B T kind of a model. So the Y, the output, I typically take the logarithm of the output and then try out uh, the linear uh, relationship between the variables to check out if I do some kind of log linear uh, trend, uh, is there any kind of a log linear trend that is present on the model compared to a, a linear trend. So for that, I, all I will do is the y values I will take their logarithms. So I will simply say logarithm of this particular sense x value. Okay, so now this will become my dependent variable whereas this itself is the independent variable. Now a new regression is being planned out. Right now a new regression is getting uh, planned out with the log sense x as the dependent variable and sense x uh, and the time as the independent variable as it is. Now when I am doing this, I see that the r squared is only 21.49 and probably here also if I am looking at if I am looking at uh, the time 0.002 and it is saying that even though the coefficient is 0.002, the uh, coefficient is statistically significant. It cannot be taken as 0 because the p-value is much less than 0 0.05. And overall, the fitment of the model is also good enough because uh, the overall ANOVA significance level is also less than 0 0.05. But what we are seeing is the r squared has not improved anything great or in fact it has fallen a little bit in this if when i took the linear trend model it was almost 22 percent whereas here it is an only around 21.49 so probably even in this case after doing a log transformation this is one of the kind of transformation that i'm trying to do on the data even after doing a log transformation in this case the estimate or the accuracy or the prediction uh, prediction reliability uh, of the model has not improved anything in a great way so the first thing that we do whenever we come across a time series data is try looking at if there is any kind of trend in the model so that trend i can observe either as a linear trend or as a log linear trend now out of these two which one i need to choose depends on how my data is uh, looking like when i am using both of the when i plot a graph with the original data which we have tried out when i plot a graph with the original data i see something going up and going down kind of stuff but if I see some kind of a pattern of uh, uh, increasing at an exponential rate or falling at an exponential rate, then I see a log linear trend model would be a much better fitment. So when, R, when the variable is moving at a more constant rate, then we see that uh, the log linear model is uh, more and more appropriate. But if the growth so here probably I can uh, I can differentiate between is the growth happening at by a constant amount if it is growing by a constant amount then I say a linear trend model is more appropriate 